After watching this speech made by Gowon, the Nigerian head of state during the Nigerian Civil War, I decided to search for more of his interviews and compile it with great speeches made by other African leaders. The video ends with the most touching one made by Gowon on why medal is not issued after the Nigerian Civil War. Now, I accept them as my people. I don't call them enemies. They're not my enemies. That's why we don't use the word enemy. We use the word only rebels against you know, Ojuku and his clique and those who that fight for him, but not against all the Igbos. Now, therefore, we've got to do, uh, we must not do anything that is going to make it impossible for us to reconcile in, in, at the end, or it will make the winning of the heart difficult in the end. Italy tried to colonize Ethiopia in the 19th century, but they suffered a big defeat. Italy soon grew in powers from the Axis power that even the League of Nations couldn't hold them. Then Italy returned to Ethiopia for revenge and dominated Ethiopia. Ali Selassie was exiled. He returned in 1941 after the Italians had been defeated and he made this speech. It is good that you are here to record this picture of me in my palace garden at Addis Ababa. People who see this throughout the world will realize that even in the 20th century, with faith, courage, and a just cause, David will still beat Goliath. Yeah, after Nelson Mandela was released from prison, he was criticized for having relationship and things to do with the enemies of the Western countries, and he replied, very welcome to America, Mr. Mandela. I'm Ken Edelman. Those of us who share your struggle for human rights and against apartheid have been somewhat disappointed by the models of human rights that you have held up since being released in jail. You've met over the last six months three times with Yasser Arafat, who you have praised. You have told Gaddafi that you share the view on, and applaud him on his record of human rights and his drive for freedom and peace around the world, and you have praised Fidel Castro as a leader of human rights and said that Cuba was one of the countries that's head and shoulders above all other countries in human rights, despite the fact that documents of the United Nations and elsewhere show that Cuba is one of the worst. I was just wondering, are these your models of leaders of human rights? And if so, would you want a Gaddafi or an Arafat or a Castro to be a future president of South Africa? One of the mistakes which some political analysts make is to think that their enemies should be our enemies. Jomo Kenyatta tells us his political philosophy. My political philosophy is, well, if I can say, love thy neighbor as thyself. <laughs> Who is your neighbor? I think the world is my neighbor. Kofiana calls for consciousness of our ecosystem. He also emphasized the need for us to bear in mind the need of others. If you take something from the earth today, you have to put something back to be able to return to harvest tomorrow. Somehow, when we move to the city, we lose that instinct. We need to create a world that is equitable, that is stable, and a world where we bear in mind the needs of others, and not only what we need immediately. Here, yeah, Kenneth Kaunda won't shave for a reason. I said I would not shave until I was told why I was in prison. Yeah, even before the civil war ended, Gowon told the world on the reason why medals will be issued after the civil war. I will hate tomorrow when the war is over and we sit around the table with an able officer and he asks, what is that medal? And I say, it is the Okiwi medal, it is the Umahi medal, it is Onicha medal, it is Inugu medal, it is Potakot medal, and uh, that this is the war for, uh, the, you know, the war against, you know, the Igbos. They said we hate to sort of, uh, you know, sort of have that sort of feeling because it will make the child feel as though, uh, you know, he's a conquered sort of person. Hey, 
do like subscribing to interesting stuff then do like this video and subscribe to this channel